Yes, sir, that makes a pretty picture, doesn't it? Particularly when it's framed this way. If you can keep those crosshairs where they are just a few seconds more, it'll be even prettier. But this is what you'll see a lot more of than Jap-held airdromes in the next week or so. Well, mister, want to see how you apply all that theory you got into your head? Then let's go. That trainer's all ready for you. Here's your pilot. And here's your sight. What's the matter? Too many gimmicks? Well, they're all important. Every one of those switches and knobs. And by golly, you'll learn to know what they're for before we're through. From the leveling system to the stabilizer. And from the switches to the knobs. What you're going to find out now is what makes what do what. So let's assume we're all set up with gyros running and all warmed up. How do you begin? Rate knob on the inside. Displacement knob on the outside. Clutch in your telescope and turn on your rate motor. Now see what you see. See how the horizontal crosshair is being slowly driven down? All right, turn the rate knob forward a couple of turns. See how you speeded up that crosshair? Now see what's happened to your rate index. Turn off your rate motor and unclutch your telescope. You see your rate index is down near the bottom of the scale. And the sighting angle index almost up to it. But you'd have to be going very low and very fast to get a range angle like that. Okay. Uncage your vertical gyro and let's try a run. Don't worry, we're just going to work on rate this time. We'll leave course till later. See that cable out there? We'll use that for a target so you won't have to worry about the course. All right, set your sighting angle for 70 degrees with the search knob. Ready? Let's go. Get on the target with the search knob. Hey, take it easy. That knob's geared way up. That's it. Now clutch in. Turn your rate water switch on. So you're too slow. Turn your rate knob forward. Wait a minute. Stop the trainer and turn off the rate motor. Do you know what was happening to that rate index? Turn that rate knob the way you were and see. And you're trying to find just one point on that scale. You wouldn't have a chance seesawing back and forth like that. Let's go again. Better put it back on the target with your displacement knob. Uh-uh, your rate's way too fast. Turn the rate knob back, but easy. Rate seems to be pretty good. Better see how much time you've got. No, no, the indices. That's the only way you can keep track of where you are. So get the habit now. Let's see how the target is doing. Looks as though your rate was a little off. Stop the trainer, cage your gyro, and turn off the rate motor. 
Let's take a crack at course now. Before you get on those course knobs, lean back and take a look at the PDI in front of the pilot. Whenever that gets off center, the pilot is going to change his course until it's back on zero. Here's what makes the PDI move. The brush on the stabilizer. Center it, and the PDI is centered. Move it, and the PDI moves in the opposite direction. What makes the brush move? Center the sight. Start the trainer. We'll take a ride without bothering about a target. Clutch in the stabilizer, and the gyro will control the movement of the sight. No, just watch the brush this time. Turn the sight to the right with the turn knob, and you move your line of sight away from your heading line to the right. Reads the same amount, doesn't it? You turned your sight, but the pilot changed the heading the same amount. You're on a new heading, but with no drift angle set up. Turn the drift knob alone. See? The bomb sight isn't changing direction, but the trainer is. Now look at your stabilizer brush and drift angle scale. See how you end up this time? You've got a drift angle established now. Now, double grip the turn and drift knobs. You can see how much more the trainer turns than the sight turns. See the advantage of combining the knobs? You build up your drift angle just as before, but also you're turning the sight back towards the target. You do that because those two knobs are geared so that when you use them together, you change the heading about five times as much as you change the sight line. That's why, to kill drift, you always double grip the course knobs. Unclutch your stabilizer. We'll go back and try it over. Only this time, correct for range and course together. Don't worry about that bug moving. It's just as if there were a crosswind and the target was still. All right, set your sighting angle for 70 degrees vision. Don't forget the telescope motor clutch. Put the sight on the target. Clutch in your stabilizer. And uncage your vertical gyro. On course. Okay, we're off. Wait and see which way you're drifting before you start a correction. You're drifting off to the left. Better put it back on target so you can see more what you're doing. Still drifting off to the left. Double grip, turn it forward easily. Easy now. That's right, put it back on again and turn on your rate motor. Seems to be still drifting. Easy now. Don't overcorrect. That looks pretty good. Put it back on the target. Now we can go to work on the rate. Seems to be a little fast. That's right, better get back on the target. A fine thing, give you a $6,000 sight and you don't want to look through it. That's pretty good. You've got plenty of time. It's pretty steady now. Maybe you'd better level up. Both bubbles center. That means your reference is vertical. That's right, back on the target. Don't forget the automatic release lever. 
Don't make any big corrections now or you'll be in trouble. Okay, bombs away. What is your drift angle? 12 degrees right. Thirty-five mils at seven o'clock. What's the matter? Expecting to hit it on the nose on your first run? Okay, try it again. Thirty-two mils at eight thirty. Twenty mils at six thirty. 30 mils at 12 o'clock, 25 mils at 3 o'clock, 38 mils at 4 o'clock. Pretty good. Try it again. Again and again and again. Several hundred times again. We're not paying off on one hit out of 50. Not in this man's Air Force. 